are at C2, adoption of 2019 board goals and objectives. This came before executive committee January 17th for approval. Approval, uh, uh, motion please, kind sir. I move that the school board adopt the 2019 board goals and objectives as attached to the board action report. I second the motion. Okay, we had a yummy, robust conversation of this in intro. Um, the motion, I, excuse me, the resolution I believe speaks for itself, unless someone is dying to input here. I'm inclined to move this to a roll call. I'm Captain. Roll call, please. Director Burke. Aye. Director DeWolf. Uh, Director Gary. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director Patu. Aye. Director, Director DeWolf, can you come up and vote, please? Aye. Director DeWolf. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director DeWolf? You wrote a couple of these goals. Better be I. Sorry, aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you, we are on number three, BTA four, award construction contract K5104, bid B12841 to Sheldrop Building Services Company for the Franklin High School window and door replacement project. This came before ops January 10th, four. Motion please. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute construction contract K5104 with Sheldrop Building Services Company in the amount of $4,909,200, including base bid plus Washington State sales tax, with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent, and to take any necessary actions to implement the contract. I second the motion. Any comments, questions, concerns? We had a robust conversation during intro. Director Mack, please. Yeah, I think I just want to quickly respond or have us respond to the, am I not on? Apologies. Um, to the questions around um, why the contractor's name was not known in intro and the timing of that. Um, we had a conversation during the ops committee about the fact that this would be coming without that because of the timing of the bid process um, um, and that the, the bid process is very um, pro forma and um, uh, we wanted to be able to move this forward so that we could um, get this project started um, knowing that, that the name would come later. Um, so that's the, that's the answer to the question of why the contractor's name was not known. And other than that, I don't know that there were any other concerns that needed to be in, oh, uh, Director, Director Geary had a, has her hand up. What kind of warranty do we get on these windows now that this has been updated, which I super appreciate in terms of the background information, it appears to me that we are replacing 31 year old windows. And is that, reasonable is that how long windows last or should we expect windows to have a warranty beyond 30 years because we're also replacing the windows that were put in in 1912 so there we're replacing 30 year old windows and 100 year old windows so what do we get for our money and what expectation because i know we have a life expectancy of 50 years for our buildings sort of as a rule of thumb, that's what I've been told. So does that include the windows or not? And I need some, I need some help here. Steven Nielsen, Deputy Superintendent. Uh, to look at the bar, you will notice that under the last paragraph before A alternatives, it lists that 
during the 1988 modernization, uh, part of the 1958 edition of the building was removed. Uh, so there were some windows that were replaced in 1988. A number of them were also original uh, windows from the 1912 construction. So you can see that uh, detail listed there. I do not know the warranty time on the building windows. We will find that out. I do know that uh, the biggest challenge for window replacement isn't a piece of paper with a warranty. It's whether or not the manufacturer and the installers are still in business. That is our biggest challenge. So a warranty, frankly, in my opinion, and take it for that, is, is really a pretty much of a, a piece of paper. And what matters is that you have to look at the vendors and the producers to make sure that you are getting uh, support from them. Uh, we do have a standard process with assuring ourselves that we're working with a, a company capable of fulfilling our needs for our, uh, our windows and our buildings. The last thing that I would say is that windows are commonly uh, known to go out in, depending upon the environmental conditions, anywhere from 10 to 15 years. That's very common in the housing industry. Uh, again, in our schools, we look for long-term support. That is a generalization, not specific to this contract. Questions, comments, concerns, Director Pinkham. Another point that was brought up in uh, <coughs> testimony, were there any landmarks issues with this? Since we're talking about historic windows back in 1911, no landmark concerns? The windows that have been specced meet the standards for the building. There is no landmark concerns, you're saying? Correct. Fine. Other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, roll call, please. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Geary? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Burke? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Okay, D1, intro item, last item on the agenda. BEX 4, BTA 4, approval of budget transfer from the BEX 4, BTA 4, Food Service Equipment Fund, and award yeah. construction contract K5108, bid number B128382. It's blank to be included for the John Stanford Center Educational Excellence Freezer Upgrade Project. This came before OPS January 10th for consideration. Approval of this item would approve a one-time fund transfer in the amount of $800,086 from the Bex 4 and BTA 4 Food Service Equipment Fund and Authorize the superintendent to enter into a construction contract in the amount of blank range between 700000 to 900000 plus Washington State sales tax for the John Stanford Center for Educational Excellence, JSCEE, freezer upgrade project. Now, this is the freezer down the hall that is bigger than most buildings. Is that correct? Uh, uh. Chief Operations Officer Fred Podesta. Yes, it's a 10,000 square foot walk-in freezer yeah, for the central kitchen for the Which nutrition. Which means 10 of my houses. And, and it, uh, is wow. a, it's a unique asset um, in the district. It's a, perhaps a little bit of a misnomer to call it an upgrade project. It will be replacing condensers, some plumbing, uh, repairing uh, damage to one of the walls that has caused condensation and created safety issues for employees that um, work and slip in the freezer. Um, so it's really restoring it back to full operations and kind of along the lines of major maintenance. Not It, it isn't going to add capacity. It will make it more efficient than it is now, but th it, it's not truly an upgrade. It's um, you gave uh, me replacing a parts. You gave me a bit of a segue. You talked about condensation and employees slipping. Yes. How long has this been going on, and how many claims have we gotten because of that? Uh, I, I 
don't know the answer to that. It's um, my understanding is there was an accident with a forklift, uh, I think uh, more than two years ago, um, that has over time, you know, created more um, uh, uh, air coming into the facility and moisture and condensation. So it's can, been a it's been a can while. Can you determine what the claims history is on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. By the time that we bring this to action, because I think that's really valuable context. Sure. You know, we're talking about a million dollars here. Yes. And this is an ex I, anybody that has an opportunity for a, a tour, it is extraordinary. Okay. Yeah. Director Mack. I'd also say that the safety of our staff is critical. Um, so it's important that we have uh, things that are in working order and not causing safety hazards for our Absolutely. staff. Um, but it's also critically important that our food is safe for our students. And if we don't have a working freezer, that's a problem, so. <laughs> Director Burke. Two, two questions, one of them are question and a comment. The question relates to, I didn't see anywhere in the bar, um, the replacement, is it gonna provide us a higher efficiency? Yes, in, the, in energy savings? the replacement condensers will be more efficient. Um, it'd be great if that's something that we could add in. I think it's sure. just important, you know, the, the, the previous board put forth a green resolution. Right. We wanna make sure that we're emphasizing places where we're being kind of frugal with our, uh, our, our energy dollars. Absolutely. And then the second one is more of, a, I guess a process question, um, we are, um, we have a, a bid essentially that is, as it says, um, will be publicly bid on February 5th. So that is. And it was not because of the weather. Um, the, the bid opening couldn't occur on the 5th, so it's going to be on the 8th now. So I guess my, my question or concern is that this is a document that has dollar amounts and whenever we put something out into the public that's got a bid process that has a dollar amount, it's essentially like, hey, here's, here's a bucket. How would you like to spend all this money? And making sure that our bids come in before we show our hand on how much our budget amount is. And this looks like it's kind of very close to that timeline. Um, was the due date for submission prior to the posting of this bar? Um, we, the timing of this work is um, important um, the the uh, numbers in the bar reflect the engineering estimate which which are kind of public information so I, I don't think this affects our bid climate as the the window um, project that uh, you just approved the same information was out there the bids came in lower than the bottom end of our engineering estimate and our projection so it's pretty standard in public contracting because of a transparent budgeting process and bidding process that people know what we've set aside for the work that we do. Right, yeah, I think that the thing that I want to acknowledge is that one of the things we figured out in, in textbook adoptions is that we were putting our public budget out there and then we were doing an adoption and a lot of our adoptions were like, oh, we've got a $5 million budget for an, an ELA adoption and the, the vendors were all coming in at $5.5 .5 million. Um, uh, I will say, um, since in public testimony the question was asked, um, how does the city uh, do public contracting? And this level of oversight at the contract level um, gets a lot more detail out to the big community than budgeting at a higher level. And, and people don't see quite as much as they see here. I, I, I would have to acknowledge that point. And that's right. why they're going to trust us enough to pass our levies. Thank you very you much. Go. I appreciate the information. Thanks so Great. much. Thank you. Other questions, comments, concerns from my colleagues? Seeing none, we are adjourned at 8 p.m. <laughs>